Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about tempo runs. So I did a vlog earlier today about lactate threshold, which is one specific type of tempo run that I think a lot of people are referring to when they say tempo run. So usually you do a lactate tempo um, anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes in duration. And the way that you would calculate your pace for a lactate threshold run would be your race pace for a one hour race. So if you went out and you ran for one hour all out, so 60 minutes, how far would you cover or what would your pace be? Um, a lot of people will use either, it depends on how fast you are. Um, like for me, I would probably do about a 15K in one hour. Some people are doing a half marathon in one hour. So it's going to be right around like between your 10K, 15K-ish um, pace, maybe half marathon pace if you're super, super elite. So this pace is obviously going to vary from day to day. So you're not always training on super fresh legs. Um, the weather is going to change it. The terrain in which you're running on is going to change this. So I don't always like to go off of the pace 100% because really what we're trying to get at with a tempo run is we're trying to increase the rate um, at which your body can remove waste products. Um, and so basically you're like towing the line of... Um, the rate at which your body is removing the waste products and the rate at which they're being created is pretty much the exact same. So you just want to be right at that line and as soon as you go over it, then the waste products are going to start accumulating and that's where you're going to start getting really fatigued. That's kind of what happens at the end of a 5k or 10k race. You just totally gasp. We don't want that to happen during a tempo run. We want to be right at the line or just under it at which... Um, they're producing and getting removed at the same time. So really, you aren't trying to race this. This is supposed to just be a steady, you know, towing the line. Um, it should not be 100% all out. Um, and this, so a lot of the times people might say that they're doing a tempo run for uh, 10 miles at 7.30 pace or something. And you might say, well, that's not right because I said the 60 minute rule. Sometimes people will refer to tempo runs as like aerobic tempo. So you might be doing something more around marathon pace. So I'm going to put a calculator in this link on YouTube and it's going to go to one of Jack Daniels calculators and it'll tell you what pace is about. Remember, there are things that affect these things. You should be running at um, if it's a long tempo, medium tempo, or short tempo. Um, I'll also put the link to my blog in there so that way you kind of know the breakdown between what's a short, medium, and long tempo because the paces will vary quite a bit. Um, I did plug in a 23.35K and um, for the short tempo, it was about a 750 pace, medium tempo, 810 pace, and a longer tempo, it's going to be about 820 pace. So really, the pace can vary 30 seconds per mile um, depending on how long you're going to go. Um, but, you know, sometimes we get really caught up in the pace, we're constantly checking the garments, and that can be a great tool, but more often than not, people are using it um, and they're kind of getting a little bit too caught up in the pace. I don't want you to really worry about the pace too much. I mean, if you're going up a monster hill, don't think that, oh, I need to hit this 8-10 pace because it's my tempo pace. Absolutely not. I would much rather have you go off of effort um, than off pace. So... Things that you should be feeling when you're in the middle of a tempo run. You should feel like you can continue going at that speed for longer than the prescribed duration. So if I say go on a 30 minute tempo run, at about 20 minutes in you could assess with yourself and say, I think I can keep going. I could keep going for uh, 40 minutes, for 60 minutes if I had to. You shouldn't feel like, oh, I, I am going to be done at 30 like and just collapse. That's not how you should feel at all. Um, you should also feel at any given point during this tempo that you could speed up significantly. Um, by that, I mean 15, 30 seconds per mile and just kind of go. Like there should be another gear that you have left that you're not engaging into. And that would be more like your race pace. Um, so it should not feel like you are giving 100% effort. This is not a race. <laughs> There's a time and a place to race, and it is not during your tempo runs. So don't try to, like, you know, hit certain paces that aren't prescribed to you or try to go a little bit faster than the paces because you're actually going to benefit more if you're going a little bit slower on your tempo days than if you're going faster because, like I said, those rates at which and you want to be towing the line. So another thing that you should feel when you're in the middle of a tempo run 
the breathing should be heavy. Sometimes people will say, oh, like, my breathing's out of control. Um, you should be able to hear your breathing. Um, that's totally normal. Um, but the thing about this is that you should be able to say a couple of words if you had to. Like, if someone was asking you questions, you could kind of rattle back two to three, um, two to three word responses if you had to. You probably do not feel like talking at all when you're during, during a tempo run, but if you had to talk, you could. So, and the heart rate, for some people who use heart rate monitors, it's anywhere between 80 and 92% of your max heart rate. So max heart rate, if it's 200, you're looking anywhere from 160 to 184 beats per minute. So there's kind of a range there. So sometimes we don't always go off heart rate, but just to kind of like check in with yourself, it should feel maybe like a seven on a scale of 10, seven or eight. Um, and you should always, before a tempo run, you should always, always, before any run or workout, always warm up. So warming up, that means going at your easy pace. Your easy pace is going to be at least a minute per mile slower than your tempo pace. Just really easing into it and allowing your whole body to warm up. Um, and then once you are done, and usually it's, uh, a warm up is anywhere from like one to two to three miles, depending on your weekly mileage. Just making sure you warm up. It is better to skip part of the workout than skip the warm up. Do not skip the warm up. If you're short on time, just don't do it because. Warming up can prevent so many injuries from happening. Just make sure you warm up. Um, and then also cool down at least 10 minutes afterwards if you can. It's very important as well. So you should really only be running a tempo run. Um, you don't do it all the time. So majority of your miles should be these easy miles, like I said. Um, and if you've ever read the book 80-20 by Matt, Matt Fitzgerald, um, that rule basically states that 80% of your mileage should be dedicated to easy running. And then 20% can be for the faster stuff like speed work, tempos, whatever, marathon pace. Um, I like to go with like 75, 25, just kind of gives you a little bit more leeway and it's not set in stone 80, 20, you know, it's, it can be stretched a little. So if you're running about 40 miles a week, that's gonna give you about 10 miles that you can do um, workouts. So what it's not gonna be a lot. So we're not gonna be doing tempo runs all the time. And in between, so let's say you do a tempo on Monday, I don't want to see you do another tempo run until at least Wednesday. And you got to make sure that these miles, these faster miles, are only going to be, you know, 25% of your weekly mileage. So don't go crazy with this. Um, if you feel like you can do more, then that means that you need to up the easy miles as well, you know. So work on maybe increasing your mileage to the point where you're feeling a little bit more fatigued and a little bit more challenged. Um, they say to increase your mileage by 10% each week, obviously with a cutback every four weeks. Um, but yeah, so I hope this kind of cleared the water as to how to do these tempo runs. Um, and your lactic tempo runs should be reserved for kind of like the shorter, um, shorter tempos. If you're talking about a marathon pace tempo run, in a long run. Um, I don't like to refer to marathon pace as a tempo because I don't really think that it is a tempo. Everyone kind of has their own def definitions, but if you're going to do a marathon paced run um, during your long run, I would just do it kind of like in the middle or towards the end. Um, you can also do like up tempos in the middle of, you know, like a 10 mile or doing seven miles at an up tempo. Um, you can do a mix and match, like a progression run. You might start at marathon pace and then take your way down to like LT tempo. It's all about um, the specific event that you're training for. Um, a lot of Hansen's methods will focus a lot on marathon pace because he's probably a firm believer in muscle memory and knowing your marathon pace and being able to jump in and out of it is going to help you a lot on marathon day just because your body is like a machine. It knows it can remember the pace that you're running at. Um, so there are different reasons for coaches prescribing different workouts. It's not necessarily that one is going to work better than the other. It's just kind of knowing the risks and the rewards between the different um, workouts that you're going to prescribe or the workouts that you're going to have yourself do. So knowing what the benefits are for each workout and not just doing them because so-and-so did them. Um, really trying to challenge your strengths and your weaknesses and what you um, have as your goals. So if you have any questions, you can reach out to me um, or just write a comment on the YouTube video. Thanks.